Hi, everyone. I'm Maddie. And I'm Sean. This is Tech Insights for Visionaries, a podcast for entrepreneurs, business owners, and anyone looking to stay on top of groundbreaking technologies moving the world forward. This podcast is produced by a team of software engineers from MobyDev, an international software engineering company focused on helping visionaries to create their products. The company invests in technology research and has years of experience building AI-powered solutions, web and mobile platforms, implementing augmented reality, and IoT technologies. Feel free to reach MobyDev and create your next product. Okay, so let's get right into it. For today's episode, we're going to talk about AI-based self-checkout solutions for retailers. You mean like Amazon? That's a great example, actually. You may have heard about Amazon stores that don't have cashiers. Customers walk into the store, put items into their cart, and then leave. AI software knows what they picked up and charges them the correct amount as they leave the store. Yeah, I've always found that really interesting. A lot of people think that this may be the future of retail. It's indeed possible. And it's worth exploring how companies other than Amazon can leverage the benefits of this technology. After all, Amazon has shown that this isn't science fiction anymore. This is something that's actually working in the real world, and it's definitely worth exploring. But what about e-commerce? Hasn't the pandemic made people switch to online shopping? Online shopping is still a major force in the retail sector, but retail is still dominated by brick-and-mortar stores. According to Forrester, 72% of U.S. retail sales still occur in person. This is presumably because people want to interact with a product before buying, or simply don't want to wait for delivery. That makes sense. That's really interesting. Checkout free shopping hasn't just been seen with Amazon, but also in several other places such as Tesco and Walmart. So how does automated self-checkout work? Well, in Amazon's case, the customer starts the session by making the customer scan a QR code. This initiates their sessions and signals to the sensor array to begin tracking their activity. The store then begins to measure the activity of shoppers, the placement and recognition of products. For checkout, when the shopper leaves a certain area, the system considers this as being the end of the session. The shopper's card is charged for the total sum after the end of the session. That's fascinating. What technologies are used to make that happen? There are a few technologies that work together to provide automated self-checkout. Computer vision and full store automation. Computer vision works to identify not only types of items, but also the positions and activities of shoppers. Computer vision is very similar to a human watching a camera feed, but much more efficient when designed correctly. There are several immediate challenges that an array of cameras wired to computer vision AI will face. For one, the system must be able to consistently keep track of where a shopper is in the store. It also needs to know what the shopper puts in their cart. Maybe facial recognition could be used to keep track of shoppers? That's certainly possible. But what if their face is invisible? Or perhaps facial recognition isn't allowed? It's possible that facial recognition might be restricted for privacy reasons. In that case, cameras may need to keep track of a shopper's appearance, like clothing. However, this leads to more complications. If the shopper takes off a jacket or puts their jacket on, it may mess up the tracking. This is why it's very important to think about how the tracking system will work so that the vulnerabilities in the systems are minimized. In addition to 100% coverage, we'll need special sensors to help keep track of what items are picked up and where those items are in the store. This will help us to track objects more accurately. I'm guessing this gets even more complicated if the store gets crowded with people. Definitely. It can be very challenging to do this. There's another problem, too. Figuring out which shopper took what item. Solving the who took what problem is made more challenging by the fact that the process isn't linear. Shoppers move items, smell them, put them back, and go to other shelves as they shop. This is especially true when there are multiple people at one shelf. In this situation, it becomes very difficult for a computer model to recognize who took what, and if they actually took the product. Well, how did Amazon solve the problem? 
Amazon got around this issue by implementing human pose estimation and human activity analysis. This adds another layer of artificial intelligence, coupled with computer vision. What it does is it measures the position and movement of a person to predict what he or she grabs. Based on the pose estimation measurements, the computer can make a more informed decision on whether or not the product was taken with intent to be purchased. What about products that look fairly similar, like different cans of soup? How can the system tell the difference between them? You're right. This is an important issue to consider. Some products have minor differences in their appearance, and that makes it much harder for the system to discern them from other objects. This is especially true if the object is moving quickly or partially obstructed. Using cameras with better resolution and refresh rate can help. This is something that low to mid-size retailers may not be ready to implement into their stores due to the high cost of development. What can smaller retailers do to mitigate the cost? Partial store automation with computer vision may be more suitable for smaller businesses. Let's imagine for a moment that this is a sort of smart vending machine. It's not quite like a box that dispenses products. Instead, a guest scans a QR code and opens a door to a fridge or a shelf covered by a glass door to start the shopping session. When this session starts, the system creates a new virtual shopping cart for the guest. Product recognition in and around the vending machine tracks how the guest takes products out and puts them back in. Cameras can also track the person in the frame. This will help us to verify that a single person is making the purchase and not another one standing nearby. Products that are taken need to be verified. The system sends data about the product's absence to compare the image of the product with the one in the database so that the computer can extract the price. Additionally, the system can update availability automatically in an inventory management system. Once the products are taken, they will be sent to the user's virtual shopping cart, available on their smartphone or a screen on the vending machine. Here, the customer can modify items and proceed to checkout. If the customer has already set up a form of payment, closing the door to the vending machine may be what triggers checkout. However, in a variation of this, the customer may be able to provide their credit card by engaging with a screen on the vending machine. Once the purchase is done, the shopper leaves the store. That's really interesting. It's significantly smaller scale than whole store automation, but it's something that I think would be feasible for smaller businesses. I could also see this being used in non-retail locations like coffee shops and food service venues. Speaking of which, checkout free food service is another variation on this kind of automation. Computer vision kiosks could replace some front-end human operations in food service environments. A machine learning model sitting on the back end can be trained to recognize dishes and other products placed on the tray to launch the checkout process. This idea can be implemented as a checkout kiosk, where a set of cameras will scan the order. The actual payment can be completed via a usual POS terminal or by using a mobile application and a digital wallet. The concept of cashierless operations can be taken to extremes with coffee shops like Starbucks. With Amazon's system, Starbucks was able to become the first grab-and-go coffee shop of its kind. Customers can place an order via a mobile application and come for their coffee without any checkout, similar to Amazon's system. However, handling computer vision projects requires significant expertise in data science and machine learning. You're right. It does take a significant amount of specialized knowledge to get these systems to work. How can businesses approach creating AI-based self-checkout? There are several requirements that we need to round up to make our automated self-checkout system. These are preferred automation methods, the size of the store, quantity of products for recognition, and existing infrastructure. Choosing between smart fridges, cases, or other kinds of dispenser machines might require less global modifications to the store while maintaining a scalable approach. Full store automation will mostly require changes to the venue layout and additional hardware like turnstiles, which can be a negative aspect of the process for the majority of store owners. How does the size of the store play a role? Vending machines can be installed in basically any number to cover all of the store's inventory and product diversity. Because of this, the store size will determine how many vending machines you'll need. 
and what the store layout will be by using smart fridges for a portion of the products sold. How about the number of products? As with any other machine learning project, a computer vision system requires training before it can recognize anything. A single fridge might contain 20 to 50 different products. Due to this, we should consider those numbers, as it will determine how long the training phase will take. And what about existing infrastructure? In most cases, physical stores don't have enough integration between inventory management, point of sale, and accounting. Although, computer vision systems will require access to the store's data to automate sales updates and product availability. Due to this, examining your existing infrastructure is another point to understand when considering the requirements of a project like this. For now though, let's say our fridge or vending machine has 35 items. What will we need next? The next thing we'd need to focus on is data collection. Since computer vision is an AI technology, training data is necessary to help the program detect objects. This is useful not only to identify products on a shelf, but also to detect and track shoppers. The optimal way to collect data for object recognition is basically to record each product on video from different angles and lighting conditions. It's important to have these videos categorized by product so the labeling will be done automatically. General recommendations for gathering the data is that it should be as close as possible to how it will look for real users. All video data needs to be recorded at 60 frames per second or faster. The higher the frame rate, the smoother the image is and the more detail we can extract from it. After data collection, what can we do next? After we collect the data, we need to train the model that will be used. A machine learning expert can prepare the data for model training by splitting it into two tasks. When the machine learning expert prepares the data, they need to split all the video frames into separate images. After that, they label the products that need to be detected. Put simply, 60 photos are extracted out of a minute-long video and bounding boxes are drawn around the target objects. After that, an algorithm is chosen. This is a mathematical model that learns patterns from the given data to make predictions. For tasks like object recognition, there are existing working algorithms that can be applied for building a model. The task is to choose a suitable algorithm and feed it with the collected data. Developing an efficient and reliable model can take several weeks as trial and error and other testing is required. Once you have the model, what then? When new products are added or swapped, model retraining will be required. This is because prediction results will differ depending on the data input. This means that each time a store obtains new items for sales and places them into a computer vision fridge, we'll need to launch a new training phase for the model to learn new items. Given that, We'll need retraining to recognize, oh, say, Pringles cans on the image, if there weren't any Pringles before. Although, this becomes easier as soon as we implement cameras in the fridge, because we can use live recordings to make annotations and launch training again. What kind of infrastructure will this setup require? Let's assume that our hypothetical store has a server that processes inventory updates and records sales volume via POS terminals. To implement a machine learning model, we'll need to add several components. The first is that we'll need to add more cameras to record and pass the visual data. A video processing unit will be required as well. This can be a video card or a single board computer, like the NVIDIA Jetson, that includes a GPU optimized for computer vision needs. A QR code should be placed on a turnstile for the shoppers to scan. A model server is also needed that will be necessary for real-time video processing. Using a hardware server at the store will guarantee more stable results. Basically, as a shopper grabs something from a fridge, container, or other area, the reaction of the system should be instantaneous. How can a system like this work with privacy restrictions? That's a good point. Privacy is a concern for both retailers and consumers. Since computer vision technologies are designed to detect and track objects with video, Recording and storing this data might violate privacy laws in some countries. In the United States, it's generally legal to use surveillance cameras in stores, as long as customers are tracked with random IDs, just for the sake of the checkout task. No other technologies like facial recognition are required. Even if the camera captures a person's face, 
It could be blurred using AI to sustain confidentiality. Would you say the automatic self-checkout would be helpful for every retailer? It's a fair assumption that autonomous checkout may seem like a pricey and bulky project to implement. However, studies show that customers are willing to use more convenient checkout methods. In a retail customer experience report from 2021, 60% of consumers said that they would choose self-checkout over interaction with the cashier. Interesting. I didn't realize so many people prefer to use self-checkout. Vending machine-style retail automation might be an affordable option for the industry, as it brings a lot of benefits for reasonable costs. Additionally, such a system can be customized to serve the specific needs of any given retailer due to flexibility of machine learning models. Basically, any type of product can be recognized with enough training. This means that convenience stores are not the only ones who can benefit from automated checkout systems. More automated self-checkout methods for consumers are the future. We've already seen several businesses take steps in this direction. The most competitive businesses are going to be the ones who innovate and keep up with ever-evolving technologies. If you are ready to take the next step into the future and stay in the race for the best AI-driven checkout system, reach out to our AI team today at contact at mobydev.biz so we can talk about your company's objectives. Thanks for listening today. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to us and share this episode with your colleagues and friends to help keep them informed on the latest technological trends. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.